working on the battery box I have the two sides cut you can see they're not really that long they go back to just where this uh, battery floor the uh, lightning hole goes and it'll also glue into the top there is this plywood support that comes around and it's up here as well it's about an inch and a half or so I cleaned the excess epoxy from the joint specifically because I wanted to add gussets and I didn't want the hardened epoxy to interfere. These uh, gussets were homemade. I took half inch square balsa stock and just cut on a diagonal. Sometimes it's not really pretty, but it does an effective job. Before adding my inner gussets, I need to open up this part right here. Um, I got a little bit ahead of myself with my battery tray. I like to have it come to the front and then sit on a front part sits underneath the tab which is on the firewall so once I had the firewall in I need to have this opened up anyway so I can get access to that and this opening will also help with these gussets up here Inside gussets are installed. Working on the wingtips now. I'm using blue foam for this. The first thing I did before gluing any foam on was I added a piece of 1mm balsa from the leading edge back to the trailing edge. And that gives a nice gap, even gap, between the aileron and the tip. And then I glued up two pieces of blue foam with some 164th ply in the middle. The reason I did this was not really so much for ding resistance, but because from here back, if I did not have the ply, it would just be this really flimsy blue foam. And even being fiberglass, and it will be, I didn't think that was gonna be enough protection for this is a rather large piece. I rough cut the uh, blue foam not quite all the way down. I didn't want the hot wire cutter to gouge out the foam and then I have to add a lot of filler. But then I, uh, I had blue tape, added blue tape to the edge, and I used some 36 grit paper and got the blue foam pretty close, flush with the balsa. And then I followed that with some 60 grit and when that was pretty much flush, and again that's shaping the top and the bottom profile only, I finished, I uh, pulled the tape off, and I finished up any rough or high spots along the seam with some 60 grit on a, glued on a dowel. So now that leaves just shaping the outer edge. Now the plan and, and the airplane has the trailing edge is, is straight with the aileron. So there's nothing really to do here. Maybe round off the edge just a little bit. And the, uh, the leading edge, it has a little circular like, uh, cut out here. So I'll be using some 36 grit paper that 164 ply is a little difficult you know to sand so i use some 36 grit i may get some tear out with the balsa but that'll be okay i 
That gets me about 99% of the way there for the tips. Got the remainder of the turtle duck here back. It's about 99% done. All right, I'm gonna apply the sanding sealer. As I mentioned before, this is a water-based sanding sealer. It's a high solids sanding sealer, so it fills in the pores really well. A little tip about using a brush. Anytime you use a brush, regardless of what it's for, whether you're gonna apply a sealer or a primer or a paint, that's about what I can think of using a brush. You should always condition the brush first before you use it. It helps greatly with cleaning. So I just use whatever the solvent is. In this case, it's water-based sealer. So I'm using a little water with some little bit of dish soap applied. If you're using uh, water-based paint, water. If you're using a solvent-based paint, then whatever the solvent or the cleaner is for that paint, you can use that. I just dip it in there wipe off most of the excess and then brush on now this sealer it dries pretty quickly the first coat usually takes about an hour or so i usually give it a couple hours the uh second third and any more coats after that is usually about maybe 30 minutes dry enough to sand so you could put on, I mean, in theory, you could put on three, four coats in a day if you started early and gave it a couple hours to dry before the, uh, after the first coat. I like to put it on just fairly thick. I want to fill those pores as best I can. The wingtips now have two coats of water-based sanding sealant on them. And then after the second coat, I went along and added some lightweight putty this uh, pretty well hides the 164th plywood. A couple other areas need a little bit of filling in. It's nice and smooth now and it's ready for fiberglass. I'm gonna start working on this servo hatch again. This fiberglass lip has been sitting on this wing for several weeks now. I don't remember exactly how long, but it's been there quite a while. Now I'm just gonna sand very lightly. I think this is 120 grit, maybe 150. I'm gonna very lightly sand the flow coat, just knocking down the nibs and trying to level out a little bit. I'm gonna let the uh, primer take most of that job. And you can see how the permanent marker has transferred to the resin. So now I have nice cut lines. After I cut out the uh, balsa and, and get my final size here for the servo, I can put this back on, match up my lines, and then cut out the fiberglass piece. Should be a perfect match. The remainder of this video was not done in sequential build order. It was actually done after the wing had been fiberglassed. But I'm including it here to maintain continuity of the aileron servo hatch. A little more housekeeping before I'm ready to prime. I need to get the servo hatch cover in place. So what I've done is I've used a route a bit in a rotary tool. Pretty neat uh, little tool. I don't think the route of bit is made anymore, but I believe there is another um, fellow that makes something similar. I'll uh, see if I can get the uh, address or the website and post that for you. I just routed out a one inch, or I'm sorry, a one eighth of an inch wide slot. And then I just cut down the fiberglass piece that I had made to fit into the slot. Cut the fiberglass slightly oversized and then trimmed uh, for a almost perfect fit. Anyway, very nice. Using this router bit is pretty simple. The uh, biggest issue you may have is setting the depth of cut. And for this fiberglass piece, I believe this was about 20 thousandths of an inch thick. So it's fairly thin. 
So to set it, you have a pilot shaft and the cutter is attached to the pilot shaft with this set screw. It rides on a, a slot that's been ground into the pilot shaft. And that fits inside and then your set screw here for the housing, flange or housing, I'm not sure what they call it, but there's another set screw at the base of that and that also rides into the same uh, slot. So I get the set screw enough to where it's captured in the slot but it's still movable. And then your whole unit fits into your rotary tool. So now you have a little bit of adjustability between the housing and the bit. Helps to have the Allen wrench already kind of sitting in the set screw, ready to tighten down. And then I just take the bit, put it on a flat surface, and I slide the workpiece up underneath the housing. And then tighten down the set screw. You won't have much sticking out because it's only 20 thousandths of an inch, but I found that to be about the easiest and most accurate way to do it. I have my opening size the way I want it. And when you use this route a bit, it's going to create an eighth of an inch groove all the way around. So I haven't cut my fiberglass cover to size yet. I need to wait until I get the groove cut then make some more reference lines like I've done here. Put my fiberglass over it, mark now where my new reference lines are, and then I can cut this. One other thing, because this is an inside cut, you want to go in a clockwise fashion so that the bit is cutting into the wood as you uh, go around. If you go in a counterclockwise fashion, the tool is going to want to run, run on you, and it's much more difficult to control. So you always want to route into the direction of cut. The blade is spinning this way. So going in this direction, the blade is cutting into the wood. And I have this set on, I don't know, it's about 15,000 RPM, I think. And that seems to work pretty well. One other thing I found. On these sides, you have the ribs. And that has a tendency to want to make the pilot bit chatter a little bit. So I rub a little candle wax on the shaft. Makes it a little bit smoother as the shaft goes along the ribs. Fiberglass has been rough cut. It's still slightly big, but the corners, they're rounded because of the router. So I just do that by sand and trial fit until I get, hopefully, spot on. And I just take one edge at a time. All right, I think that is pretty good. Installing the blocks for my hold down screws. What I'm using is some 564 Douglas fir, and it's half inch wide. So I just used a miter uh, gauge to cut out some triangular pieces. And since the gluing it will actually be up underneath the, the balsa sheathing, 
I added some 2mm balsa to the top to bring it flush with the bottom of the cover. And when I glued on the balsa, I put a little lip on it with the Douglas fir so that I know how far back to set the Douglas fir. All right, I think that's gonna work out pretty, pretty nicely. Finished up the blocks for the hinge cover and got the screws in as well. Really, really small screws. They're one mm diameter screws and the head's really not that much bigger. So it should be fairly inconspicuous, I hope. Anyway, that part's done.